Hey guys, welcome back to Matt Tacker RC. This time around we are continuing with Project Blue. So for those of you who don't know about Project Blue, make sure you check out the link above and below in the description to the playlist. This is the third video in the build series. We've covered so far intro to the project and also we've covered the amazing Stinger motor and units that we'd be putting into the model as well. Sorry, that's not a Stinger motor. The unit is the Stinger. The motor is an Eco Drift. Got to be really clear on that. So this time around, uh, video number three, we'll be continuing with actually building Big Blue and we'll be hinging the model. So putting the uh, elevators on, putting the rudder on, putting the ailerons on, and hopefully also fitting in the elevator servos and also the ailerons servos as well. But before we do that, let's roll the intro and I then I can get on and show you all the hardware that's going to be going into this model. Let's do it. Okay guys, so first up, as I just said rather badly, we are putting a stinger system into or onto the front of Big Blue. Eco drift motor, I'm not gonna cover that in too much de detail because I've already done an unboxing on this and giving you my first impressions. That's the motor set up. Uh, I've also covered the ESC in the other video as well. So again, make sure you check that out. Link is below. Uh, for servos, we are gonna be going, we've got a pile of servos here. We are gonna be going for the Savox 1270s all round with the exception of the rudder servo where I'm using a 2290. So I'm just using a single servo on this. Now my other 104 inch extra, which you can probably just see. No, you can't, sorry, you can't see it. I'll show you that on a, on a picture. Um, that's the same model running with a DA120, but that one has two rudder servos in. This time around I've been advised I can just go with one. So I've gone for a much more powerful servo. So we'll see how we get on with that. Um, powering it, I've got a brand new power box that's going in. I'll show you that next time around actually. So it's like a, a competition SR2, I believe. I might have got that wrong. I'll throw it up on the screen. Off of that, I have two Futaba receivers and I'm just using the R703SB. So S bus receivers for some redundancy. And then I've got a choice of battery for the, to power the servos, which is gonna be two of these mania ones, but I'm not too sure on these at the moment. They, they feel a bit big, so I'm gonna actually go ahead and weigh those. If not, I'll fall back to the OptiPowers, which I've used in quite a few of my other models. Again, redundancy on the batteries as well. Uh, all sorts of other toys as we go along the line, such as these rather nice and also rather expensive, but don't tell my partner, uh, server heads. I mean, ridiculously expensive, it's 100 pound on server heads. I mean, come on guys. They look nice, they look pretty. Let's see what they look like in the model. So I'll cover other hardware as we go along as well. But for now, let's go and find the elevators. Actually guys, just before we do that, just before we go and find the tail plane or the tail section rather, um, I want your opinion on something. So I have here a rather fetching Extreme Flight Pilot, which does come with a visor as well. You've got, obviously got to cut out the visor, but it'll go on the front. Um, so this is what Extreme Flights say is the right size for the model. Looks good, looks fine. The model has a cockpit as well, which we, which we can put in, we will cover. So should I go for this or Should we put in the custom sprayed Punisher Pilot, which I don't know if it's doing this justice, but this is really nice. Let's go cl close here. It's got a skull on top, lightning around the back. Just about to see the shadow of the skull on the background. Should we go for the Punisher Pilot? Now it is obviously a little bit bigger, but I think it will fit in there. I think it will look good. But what I'd like you to do is in the, well, I'm dropping these, in the comments below on the video, vote either Punisher or Extreme Flight Pilot and let me know. Just put a comment in and I'll go through that on the next video next time round or when we come to the cockpit and we'll choose one together. So you guys let me know what you'd prefer. They 
uh, they're similar size. Or do we I save this for something bigger? I don't know. You guys let me know. Right, let's find the tail plane. Okay guys, so let's start with the tail section. Now firstly, excuse all the mess behind me. That is just boxes for, which got components in them for new models I'm looking to build. And this is a very small workshop, which I think I say on every single video. Yeah, okay, I need more space. Right, so tail plane. Uh, if you recall, uh, the model I bought, the one four inch extra was second hand. So it was a kit that was pretty much untouched, but the only thing that was done in it already was the hinging of the elevator control surfaces and also the mounting of the server arm and the rod as well. So these have been glued in and the hinges have been glued in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is really just check that over. So I'm gonna get both of these out at the same time. Uh, just check them over and also want to, I want to check the gap though as well so I'll make sure we've got maximum movement so that's something I don't want to be able to correct later which looks like we we have got maximum movement just about pretty much there on the down um, but what I'm keen to do is actually compare it to my other one so let's get out the tail section from from Big Red Uh, which is looking rather dirty, I must admit. And already you can see that the hinge, the, the gap there is a lot smaller. Just compare. Let's get the same one. Yes, yeah, so the gap here is slightly bigger. So I might look to put something in there. Can you see that? Is it me being fussy? I don't know. I might look to put something in there just to cover that up. But it looks like it lines up okay at the front. Let's just have a look what's happened with the servos here. Obviously no servos in there. Look at my other one, which is actually using uh, JR servos in this one. But yeah, okay. It's got a custom end on it. Right, okay. I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, get the servos and fit them. Right guys, the servos are in both of the elevators now. So I just want to stop for a moment and show you a bit of a close up of this. So as you can see, I hope you can see down there, probably just about, so they're in there, a little bit dark. Sorry about that. Um, I've left the servo screw out of the head at the moment to allow me to adjust it later on. Uh, like I said, the linkage, linkage was already there. The horn was already there. This one was already hinged. Um, I'm gonna adjust this out to the top hull so I can get a little bit more movement on the down elevator. I mean, that is enough movement in fairness, but I wanna max it out. So I'll adjust that shortly. But I thought I'd just stop as well and show you these extreme flight servo heads which I referenced were a little bit pricey earlier on but they are they are super good quality so I'm using the two inch on the elevators which is exactly what's recommended by Extreme Flight if you go onto Extreme Flight website look up your model you'll see what the recommended gear is for that I quite like that um, so I want to set this up say for maximum movement but let's have a look at this quick one of the things I like about these heads if you've not seen them before, again, try and get as close to the camera for you. Focus, there we go. Um, okay, tells you the sides, two inch M3 threaded uh, holes there. I will have put a nut on the back as well. Reinforced section on the back. Um, but they have this extra screw in here. Uh, where has it gone? Focus. I think you can just about see it. They have an extra screw in there. So once you've screwed the servo, main servo screw down, you can lock tight and tighten this bolt up as well and it really will grip the top of that servo head. And that's why I use these. There's other makes that do the same now, um, same design, but much better than your general plastic servo heads that come with with the servos. And talking of which, just tell you a little bit more about these servos I'm putting in here. So as I said before, I've gone for the Savox 
1270TGs or SV1270TGs for their full name, 8.4 volts servo. Um, according to the back, they weigh 64 grams. And on April 8.4 volts, they can do a torque of 45 kilograms. And that's a pretty impressive servo there. Nice, small. Um, I will admit that when I put when I put the first servo into the elevator here, I did drop it all the way through the hole and it did end up back here. That wasn't too good. Luckily, I still had a hold of the wire. Um, as far as the wire is concerned, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna tape it off to one side. So there's no risk of it getting involved with the head at all. Um, I might change the connectors yet. I've not decided. So literally that's as far as I'm gonna go with the tailplane right now. Leave the heads loose, ready for when we plug it into the into the power box. So that'll do for now. Nice, quick and easy. Next step is actually to make some space here, get rid of all this rubbish in the background because I'm gonna need some extra, well, I just need a lot of space really, because we're gonna get the wings out. We can get the wings out. I don't think they've been touched before. We're gonna get them hinged, get the servos in. Yeah, let's do that. Oh. Right, I've made some space, look. I've actually made some space, which is great. And I found the instructions. And the one thing I wanna point out on here is something very important apparently. There's inboard servo horns and outboard servo horns, which basically mean the hole's in a different position because of the way the wing tapers. So you'll make sure you get the servo horns the right way around. But this isn't a tutorial about that. Let's get the wings out, see if we've got enough space on this bench. Oh, put this out as well, that's rather nice. A nicely labelled bag, thank you Extreme Flight, with all the bits that I need for the main wing. And the rods are even made up as well. Hopefully roughly the right length. Washers, horns, everything we need. It's a bit dark, isn't it? All right, let's go on with it. Let's get one out. Struggling, struggling. Struggling a bit for space. Just lay that down there. Just gonna get the other one out as well. Do something to rest it on. where you start to realise how big this model is. I mean that's that's quite a size and that's just one wing panel. Still got the foam on the end from the box. Let's put this one out of the way by the camera without dropping it. Day. There we go. All right, so what do we need to do? No plastic. Let's take the foam off as well. We we'll leave that on actually. Let's leave the foam blocks on the ends because that'll help protect it. Just those foam blocks there. So spin around. Right, so we're basically going to pull the aid one out. We're gonna get all these hinges glued in, get it hinged, hopefully get the right distance on the gap. We're gonna put the horns on, work out where they go. Um, and we're gonna cut out the boxes for the servos. Now it should just be a case of cutting through the covering and the boxes are already behind and just sealing the covering back up, um, dropping the servos in. 
So let me go ahead and get this hinged, get it glued. Um, I'll get the horn ready, I'll get the holes ready, and then I'll show you what it looks like. So guys, a quick update on progress. I've gone ahead and located each of the servo holes, as you can see here. Um, I've cut them out and I've just ironed back the covering. I've not yet sealed the covering because as you can see, I just need to make a little bit of adjustment because of the angle the servo needs to go in. I'm just gonna need to adjust a little bit off the back edge. Then once I've done that, I'll seal all the edge here with a little bit of Sino, just so the covering doesn't lift. So that's that job almost done. And then we've located the slots um, for the horns on both sides. And I've used the plate to cut round, mark out the slot. And I've actually saved the patch covering that's come off as well. because I'm gonna put the plate on, put the horns in, and I'm gonna slide the covering back over the top so it has a, a white finish on it rather than this mesh. And that's a, a little tip. One of my friends Manuel gave me that he's done on his Extreme Flight Extra as well, so that tied it up. Um, so I'm gonna get those in place, get the servers adjusted, and then I'm gonna hinge. So interesting enough, there's what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hinges on here, uh, which are rather nice, but they are also a little bit tricky to do to be honest with you because obviously if you put these hinges in at a slightly wrong angle you're going to start binding you're not going to get the right effects so they've got to be in, imperfect and they've also got to be in at, at the right depth as well i'll just show you quickly if i can there we go if they're in too deep it's going to be a problem too far out you're going to end up getting a getting a gap so you've got to be just right on the hinge line to get as close as possible. So we're gonna take our time doing that. I'm probably gonna glue them all in one side first using epoxy into the wing. Then I'm gonna off the A one up using epoxy as well. I'll probably use 15 minute epoxy on here to give me enough time to work it. Definitely, definitely not using Sino, it's far too quick. So yeah, we'll get the boxes adjusted. I'll get the horn stuck on and then I'll get the aileron mounted Okay guys, so let me take through the progress so far of this wing panel. One second. Okay, so first off, we've hinged the aileron uh, and I'm pretty pleased with the gap there. Now that was quite fiddly and to be honest with you, I really don't like hinging. Just saying that uh, I'm not particularly good at, but this one's come out pretty well, but there was nine hinges on this, so two on the root and two on the tip and then just single ones throughout as you can see. So I actually ended up gluing the hinges into the aileron first and then waiting for that to dry, used half an hour epoxy in the end and then um, doing the same on the other side. Now the tip of these hinges and perhaps I'll show you on the next wing is when you put the hinge into the wing don't put it all the way in, leave it about five mil hanging out clean it all up first and then push it in and any excess epoxy make sure you wipe away so it doesn't get on onto the hinge joint. Easier said than done but it's on there now and it looks pretty good. Next up we did the horns you saw them earlier on uh, we cut it out the covering we put the epoxy through into the hole put epoxy on the horn pieces as well squished it all down with the plate epoxy in the plate then put the covering back on top just so it looks a little bit tidier done that on both sides job done and then i fitted the servos we opened up the hole by cutting the cover in um, ironed it in there sealed it with a bit of thin sino and then run the servo in there had to make a up a couple of servo leads using power box wire but that was absolutely fine not done that before but it worked out quite well and then i've left the servo heads loose at the moment because of course i need to match these servos because both servos operate the same control service. So the first time I turn it on, I need to pop off the head. Otherwise you're at risk of damaging the control surface or the servo if they're not matched properly. So pop it back on for now so it doesn't damage the wing. And that's that really. So that probably took me a good hour. The time I made up the wires, which you just see in there coming through. Um, messed around waiting for the epoxy to dry as well, I guess. So 
I want to do now is just get on with the other wing. Then once we've done the other wing, which I'll show you quickly once I've done it, uh, wing panel it is rather, I will crack on with the rudder. There's the panel ready to go. So let's get that done now. Okay guys, so I'm just gluing these hinges in and I thought I'd show you one of these. So literally, see if the glue's not dry, that's enough. So I'm just filling the hole with as much epoxy as I can get in there. Let's just zoom in a little bit, I think you can see that. And the trick with these hinges is put a little bit of glue on them as well, just good measure. Just push them in just to leave about a quarter of an inch just showing. Difficult to do on film. The car noise is going on outside. So here we go, push it in. Just leave a bit showing. Bend it over so you make sure you've got the right angle. You don't want them twisted, you don't want them over, it's not going to work. So just check the angle. Eyeball it, it's fine. Then what you want to do is use some alcohol spray, gel, rubbing alcohol on a bit of tissue to remove the excess glue. So I'm moving quite fast here because I've only got five minute epoxy. Spray some of this on. Don't worry about wasting it. It's important to get this glue off of the hinge part of this and wipe it off the surface as well. And then push the rest of it in. If it squeezes out again, just wipe it around. Just push the other one in. Just put it back over it. It's much harder to do this when you're recording. And that way you shouldn't really get any glue in the hinge itself. It worked like a treat on the last one. So hopefully it'll work on this one. There you go, get it all off. He's just starting to cure, so I've done all the other hinges already. Let's check it, it's feeling okay. Looking straight, looking good. Okay, got a bit of covering to touch up there. Apart from that, that is the hinges in the aileron. And the aileron itself is still looking pretty clean. Okay, just thought I'd show you that. Okay guys, so both wing panels are finally done. Took me a while because I had to do it over a couple of days because we're busy working, but it's done. So let me show you where we've got to. So you can see the second one is still drying. I'll just use some tape there to hold the aider on nice and tight in there. I've got the servos mounted. Again, no servo screws in them yet because they're going to need to be adjusted. Which first wing panels over on the side as well. Uh, servo wires are in and run through as well. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the server ends yet. Uh, check that out later. And I've just dug the rudder out. So this, I mean, look at the size of this. This is massive. Love it. Put it my hands. Pretty big. So I've just done a dry fit on the one, two, three, four, five, on the six horns in there to make sure they go in. And then I'm going to use the same technique. So I'm going to pop them in, in this half first, making sure I don't push them all the way down. Um, clean them up, then push them in, make sure they're on the right line. And then we'll be able to fit the rudder. So we'll get the rudder fitted as well, which would be a really good place to stop. So I'm going to crack on with that. I may put the rudder server in, but I've not really worked out I guess, yeah, I could put the rudder server in. Let's see, let's see how far we get. Let's get at least get it hinged and get it on, get it glued in. 
see what it looks like. Okay guys, so we have managed to get the rudder on as well. Check it out. Just move back a bit. Zoom right out rather. There we go. So it's taped up at the moment because it's literally glue is just drying. I'm pretty happy with that small gap there. It's fitting nice, it's flush at the front. And well, it's looking good. Looking better with the rudder on. Start to see the size of it. And I squeezed in a servo as well. Show you. So that's a single Savox. Which one was it? 2290, that's it, yeah. 2290 servo, which has got 70 kilograms of torque. So I'm just gonna go for a single servo in this one. Uh, my other one, my Petra one's got double up on it, but uh, this should be absolutely fine with a single servo. So we have mounted, let me see, two in each ring. That's four. One each half of the um, elevator. So that's six plus the seventh one there. So we're done with servos. Obviously I'll connect up the closed loop, we go and pull pull. I did have the option to mount a servo down towards the back of the rudder, but because of the, well, because of the fact the Stinger is a lighter engine than a typical petrol engine, I thought I'd bring the servo more to the front of the model to hopefully help with balance. I think that makes sense. Okay guys, so that's about it. We've managed to get the elevators hinged, Ailerons hinged, servos in elevators, servos in the ailerons, a few wires run as well, rudder fitted, and also the rudder so fitted as well. So next time around, we will be looking at the Stinger. So yeah, don't remember this, sorry, don't remember. Next time around, we'll be looking at the Stinger. So remember, this is an all electric setup. So if you haven't seen that Stinger video already, um, there'll be a link to it in the description below. I might do an intermediate video and compare this Stinger back again to the GP or equivalent petrol engine that I may have put in this and weigh all the components to a petrol engine, the pipes, the manifolds, the tanks, and then compare it to the weight of the Stinger and the battery. So we'll probably do that um, before I crack on with this, but that won't take too long. Don't forget to vote on the pilot as well. Do you want to see the Extreme Flight Pilot inside Big Blue or the custom style Punisher Pilot, which does have a body it's just back there buried in the workshop somewhere. So vote below, just say Punisher or Extreme Flight Pilot. Uh, I'll count them up and then you guys can decide what's going in there. Right, cheers, hope that was enjoyable. See you next time around.